Welcome to Bloomers and Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Before you put away that lawnmower, there's a few things you need to take care of. You may not see any spotted lantern flies, but egg masses are still around and need to be removed. We'll tell you how. Fall blooming camellias are hardy in zone 5 and warmer. We'll discuss what you need to take care of these beauties in your landscape. It's time to winterize your fig tree. We'll explain what you need to know. This Friday, November 19th, is Bloomer's Holiday Preview Party. You're all invited to attend. It's our annual kickoff event for the Christmas holiday season. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Before the weather gets too cold, now's the time to apply Fertilome's Winterizer for established lawns. Grass absorbs the greatest amount of nutrients later in the season, just prior to the winter months. This 25-5-6 analysis also contains five micronutrients, boron, copper, iron, manganese, and zinc. Furlom's Winterizer for established lawns builds hardiness, stem strength, and disease resistance, ensuring a healthy, stable plant which can endure the hardships of winter better than weaker plants. Lawns fed in the fall are first to green up in the spring. So, the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Furlom's Winterizer for established lawns and expect to have the best-looking lawn in the neighborhood. Neighbors Garden Center, Main Street, Hellertown, PA. Rhodes Garden, Delcab Pike, North Wales, Pennsylvania. Rourke Farm Supply, Elmer, New Jersey. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Now, I know you can't wait to pack up your uh, mower, okay? (laughs) So, wait. There are a few things you'll need to know. Waiting like you just were for the intro? I know. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, Love you, Julio. I know you do. You are the best. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, soil temperatures are still warm, and that Sagenta website lets people know. What is it? Sagenta.com? It is. I looked at it today. The uh, temperature right now is 55 degrees. You know, it's warmer today. Uh-huh. That's weird, because it was warmer. To, it's warmer today than it was, I think, last week right. when we talked about it. Oh yeah. In, there you go. All right. Point being is that we did have that cold snap. Yeah, we did. And it kind of is telling your lawn to say, "All right, it's time to back off. You're not going to grow as much, but it still will allow grass seed to grow." Mm-hmm. But what does that have to do with your lawnmower? Your lawnmower is going to make your lawn look good if you have the right equipment. What do I mean by that? First of all, with a sharp blade on your lawnmower, 
it is going to make a clean cut rather than shred the top. And those of you that have had a mower now for a while and you're too cheap to take the blade <laughs> off and get it sharpened, you may have like white frayed edges on the tops of your grass. Julio, I'm going to ask you about your lawnmower. Yeah, you have you uh, sharpened no. your blade as Julio is saying? No. no. <laughs> Shame on you, Julio. Oh, yeah. Well, you have Zoiser, so, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah, it doesn't cut it. <laughs> it does, you know, again, you don't even qualify for a lawn no, person. <laughs> but uh, oh, anyway, <laughs> but the, the thing is, if you do it now, yeah. first of all, lawnmower shops are slow. They are not, it's not like springtime when they're like going crazy because nobody can pull start their lawnmower and that you'll be able to get in, you'll get that blade sharpened, you put it right back on your mower and it's going to be good to go and, and that in the spring. And you'll be amazed on how good your lawn looks because a lot of times people will cut their grass and it'll look like it's almost, it's like white on the top. Yeah. And that's because instead of cutting it, it's shredding the top of your grass. That's number one. The other thing is that with your lawnmower specifically is that your gas tank, you're going to have some gas rest left in there and you should get a fuel stabilizer to protect your engine. I talked to a mechanic and he said the number one destroyer of engines that he works on, and he works on small engine repair, was by not using a fuel stabilizer so that it sits in the gas tank and that what it does is it ruins the carburetor. It just It is just something you just need to do and that every time you put fuel into your lawnmower, you should be using stabilizer. So make sure you do that. Other things are simple. You don't want to have your leaves and and on your lawn and mat down on your lawn because it will kill the grass. It also will cause disease and there'll be all kinds of problems. So get those leaves off your lawn and just get down and while you're doing that, rake a little harder and put down some grass seed. Yeah, that's great. Right? Yeah. We were talking about grass seed a few weeks ago. Fescue. Right, tall fescue will germinate in about two weeks. Ryegrass will germinate in about a week. Now you can do what's called winter seeding. Now, Julio, can you describe winter seeding? Well, you just make sure that you know you're covered. No, no, winter seeding. Uh, what is that? Do you know what that is? Not, not totally. But I. I All mean, right, I'll explain winter it. seeding. Winter yeah. seeding is when you put down seed on your lawn, mm-hmm. and you don't expect it to germinate until the following spring. spring. Right. So what you're doing is you're just broadcasting some seed on top. I don't particularly like it because if you're doing that, you are going to kill any non-germinated seed with your crabgrass control. So it's going to prevent it. So you're with me, some people say, oh, I do it every year. Uh, I don't know. If you're doing the crabgrass control at the right time, you're going to stop that seed from, from germinating. If you want to do it, you can, but just keep in mind mm-hmm. that you you are going to have seed that may not germinate. So if you're using bluegrass, bluegrass will not germinate for 31 days. By the time you're looking at your Sagenta website soil analysis, it's going to be too cold for that seed to germinate. So what I would do is make sure that you're raking a little harder, getting it in contact with that soil, especially those bare spots, especially where some of those spots where that you had that crabgrass Mm -hmm. that again, everybody we talked about a few weeks ago about it being purple or your lawn is your lawn turning colors anywhere where it's turning colors. That's probably going to be weeds. And if you can rake that out get some of the, the desirable seed in there. And again, fescue and ryegrass is going to germinate this fall yet. So you'll still be able to get some germination, and that's what you want to do. And then you you started talking about covering it, right? Covering, yeah, yeah. And you want to, What would you cover your seed with? You can put a little bit of uh, straw on top. A straw, <coughs> but you want to use, I mean, you want to use a straw that does not have weed seed oh, in weed it. Seed, yeah. So there are specific types of straw, like there's uh, like a tack cover. And there's also that you may have seen it specifically made, like there's the lawn soils that are out there. 
even peat moss that you don't want to use that straw bale that you bought for Halloween no. <laughs> because that's going to have all seed in it. Like we've had some left over where we've kept them in the back. They've gotten wet, and all of a sudden they start sprouting. <laughs> they sprout, <laughs> sprouting. It looks like grass, but what it is, it's a weed, and it's sprouting those seeds that are in that straw. So you want to use something that specifically there are packages of straw that say weed free and what they do is they harvest the straw before it's gone to seed so before that seed head matures that so it doesn't have any of that weed seed in it and that's what if you want to be very careful that you get a straw tack you want to make sure that you're using one that does not have the seed in it two if you're using something like say bumper crop over top of it that would be my Better. ideal. Or, or some of the lawn soils aren't bad. Like Espoma has a new lawn soil. Well, very yeah. good. Organic, yeah. It's very good. And that where you can put that over top because you don't want your grass seed to become bird seed. Bird seed. <laughs> yeah, that's right? right. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do a bird seed, sh- uh, a birding, wild bird show wow. in, a, in a week or two. Right. But, uh, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. People will see that all of a sudden they have all these birds on their lawn and they're like, there goes all your seed. (laughs) So you want to make sure you're hiding it and covering it up from the birds. Mm -hmm. Anyway, do those few things, get the the leaves off, Mm -hmm. get some grass seed in the bare spots. You want to get your lawnmower blade sharpened and you want to put a fuel stabilizer in that gas tank and you'll be ready. I mean, that first pull next, next spring, it's going to start <laughs> yep. if 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 mm-hmm. you're putting the fuel stabilizer in there. That's right. <laughs> Nothing's worse. Nothing's worse. Yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of mower do you have? Don't tell me. You have one of those push mowers. No. I tell real type. No, I'll tell you what I got. I got it oh. two years ago. I got a Greenworks battery-powered mower. Battery-powered? Yeah. Does it hold up all right? Yeah. Works. Yeah. Yeah, it works great. Now you got a, a nice got, small uh, lawn. Yeah, a small lawn. But, I mean... Zoysia can be thick. Oh, I know. It's up at the highest level. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, I can only do it that way. All right. Otherwise, it bogs Uh, down. It wouldn't start. (laughs) Okay. It would go. It would just. It would just bind. It would just. And it would hum. It would hum. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. I like it though. I like it a lot. Yeah. It's real light. Yeah. We did a review on the the Mantis battery powered. They were That's using right. putting the bulbs in. That <laughs> yeah. sucker still working. Still working, yeah. Still working. I did replace the battery once, uh-huh. but man, it's still it's still, it's still going. So yeah. that's uh, got two thumbs up for that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so again, that's the Mantis Tiller we're Mantis. talking about. Yep. All right. If you've got questions about your lawn, please call the hotline. That's 609-685-1880. We want to answer all of your questions. You know how to get a hold of us. We're going to be right back right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Organic Potting Soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. It's
with the perfect container can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Julio, spotted lantern fly time. Uh, yes, it is. They have seemed to have disappeared, but they haven't. They haven't. Um, I didn't think they were too bad this year, yeah. considering, like last year, they were like, I mean, oh, it was boy. like the sea, the parking yeah. of the Red Sea when we'd walk in the parking lots in Philadelphia. <laughs> they were everywhere, but they have made it to Jersey. You said you didn't have an issue with them. No. We uh, we had some at the Garden Center for sure. Um, Jim Widener, heads up, Jim. Just uh, give me a shout out. Dr. Jim, he's, he had them, and he was battling all year because he saw how bad they can be. But just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they have left. And what we mean by that, they've left you a present. <laughs> and it, and what it is, it's their offspring. <laughs> look, I want everybody to look on their trees, to on their fence posts, that they climb up to about six to eight feet. Look, and you're looking for that, looks like putty, right, Julio? Yeah, muddy like like mud. a swath of mud yeah. that somebody like kind of just threw at your tree mm-hmm. and that that is where their egg masses are and that's what you need to take care of now i i equate the issue that we had a decline for us anyway in the because people have been diligent and concerned about this massive pest I mean, last year, right? At the studios, they were climbing the buildings to lay their eggs. And right now, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for those egg masses. And like I said, it looks like putty. It looks like, you know, sometimes if you look really quick, it looks like like almost a gray colored bark. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to get rid of. And, And you have to get rid of it by, you scrape them off into a baggie that's filled with, you could be bleach, hand sanitizer, alcohol, and you just want to put a baggie in, use like a credit card or something thick like that, that you can scrape it off without, you're not going to rub the bark off of the tree, but you need to get that egg mass off and put it into that rubbing alcohol or, or again, the bleach, whatever you're using, because that will kill the eggs. That will kill the eggs. Did you see any um, egg masses around your neighborhood or anything, Julio? No, not, not yet. I, I know they're there. They're oh, they're yeah. going to be, um, we're going to look around bloomers and we're going to yeah. make sure. Make I mean, sure we've we been keeping it. our eyes out. But it's going to be on strange places. It's not always on plant material. So you'll find it where it'll be on a fence post. I mean, mm-hmm. it firewood. Firewood, yeah. You know, people you know think, oh, well, you know, I'm safe. It's firewood. Right. They will... People are, with all of the devastation that happened with that uh, tornado that came yeah. through this area, sure. there's lots of trees that have been cut down. Right. They may have laid oh, their yes. egg masses before then. So check your firewood, check things like that. Um, wow. Again, it, it's 
it will look like now where it's a it's it changes because right now they've just been laid and it may have a little bit of a sheen to it but it looks like almost like clay like uh again it looks like mud but as that protective coating drops off it'll almost look like like more of like a beaded you'll see the eggs and that you'll see the egg casings and as it wears off like with the snow and the rain and, and the the weather that we'll have one thing that i i was happy to hear there's been research that suggests that if you use a horticultural or a paraffin oil spray now we talk about that we were talking about a few weeks ago you use that spray uh, horticultural oil to spray on your house plants and before you bring them inside that it will be somewhat effective about destroying the egg masses when applied but this is the trick it's got to be applied in the weeks before they hatch okay so it's not so much we're telling you to do it now mm -hmm. but we're telling you to do it say in march or in really february's a little early but you could still do it it's not going to hurt your your trees or your plants because the way that it works it's not a poison the way that it works is that the, the horticultural oils and all of the oil-based insecticides you see as they smother the insect and they kill it that way not that you're putting a poison down so next spring if you see egg casing it's not like you can't do anything or if you see them where you can't reach mm -hmm. then you're going to want to spray them with that horticultural oil mm, pretty good yeah i mean th this is something we've been dealing with because we've been on ground zero in the delaware valley but it's reaching into northern jersey into connecticut into some of our other listening areas up uh, in the tri-state area up in new york so keep your eyes out you can look for look for that egg mass and that also you want to maybe report it to your um, county agricultural agent if you do find egg masses because they still are plotting where the infestation is going and what direction it's going and what kind of volume they're dealing with so this is not don't let your guard down yet maybe you didn't see them as much as you did last year but Again, they're still around, and they still are a big problem, yeah. potentially a massive problem. So I don't know. Have anything to add, Hul? Yeah, don't you think that this is the best time to get them because they're not hopping all over the place? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about we were had people trying to step on them. <laughs> yeah, right. When they're adults, and they're, they are, they're, they're called flies, like, you know, spotted lantern flies, but they really aren't a fly. They're a leaf hopper, and that, I mean, <laughs> you better yeah. get your tap shoes on because <laughs> right. once you go to step on it, it just takes off, and then uh -huh. you really, it's not that effective. <laughs> no, so, no. again, scraping off, Lou, you're yeah. exactly right. And that the adults don't overwinter, but one adult is going to do hundreds, lay hundreds of eggs. Gosh, yeah. So that's what you need to get right. to get good control. So. Again, scrape it off. You're going to put it into either alcohol, rubbing alcohol, or you could do hand sanitizer. You could do bleach in like a baggie, and then go online and go to your local uh, agricultural agent. You know your your Rutgers Co-op Extension Agency in New Jersey, Penn State for Pennsylvania, and I'm sure each state from Maryland to uh, to Connecticut have their own. Right agricultural agencies and that they are keeping a lookout for the spotted lantern fly all right, all right we've got a break we're going to be right back right after this Six eight five one eight eight zero.
Chester Pike, Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Herful Cross Keys Road, Washington Township, New Jersey. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Cole, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomer's in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. You're listening to Bloomer's in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, and you know, fall flowering camellias are, are, are some of my favorite plants. Yeah, they and definitely. I, and I've, you know, I had them in my in my garden. And uh, I had past tense. Yeah, I had it. Yeah. What happened? Well, you know, what happened was no. that I had it on the east side where right. the sun was coming up. Right. And I wasn't getting I wasn't getting a lot of blooms. Really? Yeah. And because think, they were shaded, you think? Because they can take some shade. I think it was, you know, because of uh, you know the morning sun, and it was probably you know. Uh, didn't like it there at all. You just didn't like the spot you chose. Yeah, that's what it was. Well, you know my story. I have that Yuletide variety camellia, and right now they are blooming, and they are wow. stunned. <laughs> they great. are just like, and they bloom from the uh-huh. top, from the bottom up. Uh-huh. So I'll have blooms, and we've talked about it. I'll have blooms in January. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. people are like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Yeah. It's like, and it's my camellia. And yeah. fall flowering camellias are Doing their thing right yeah, now. Yeah, I was and, over your house in January and it was snowing. Yeah, and, and there are flowers on your on your camellia. Right. <laughs> it was like wow. I mean, they are beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah. Yuletide is my favorite. Mm-hmm. And Anthers in the middle. It's just gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It's gorgeous, and they they were pruned right this year, mm-hmm. so they're really big and yeah. full. <laughs> Look, if, if go to your local garden center, ask them if they have any camellias. If, and if they do, get out there, plant them, plant them the correct way. You're going to want to dig the hole twice the size of the bottom, add half bumper crop, half the soil that you dug out, make a mixture, mix it all together, then pack it all around the root system. And then you're going to water it in. And feed them. You want to feed them. You can still use, make sure they like a little acidity, like just like azaleas yeah. and rhododendrons. And that you're going to want to use holly tone from a spoma, organic, slow release. That's what you really want. If The only caution, you don't want them in a wet area. You didn't have yours in the clay or wet area, did yeah. you? I mean, their zone has gotten colder and colder as far as being varieties available. Hardy, yeah. That where it used to be zone seven. Right. Now we couldn't grow, just yeah. like crepe myrtles, just like yeah. southern magnolias. And now, yeah. thanks to the scientists and the, the nursery breeders that we're able to get varieties that can grow yeah. in our hardiness zone. Right. So zone five is cold. Oh, it is. Zone, yeah. zone five is cold. We're a seven. Oh, yeah. But uh, again, the, you want to look for the fall blooming ones because there are spring blooming. Don't just don't buy a camellia and think, oh, you know, I'll just pick one up where you look to see when it blooms and also check that zone of where it's safe for. And you want to go the coldest possible. I I, I absolutely love my Yuletides and that every 
winter when you know when when there's less and less sunlight yeah. and you know, you got that natural like depression going where it's like <laughs> oh man a yeah. spring is never gonna come yeah. and then you see all of a sudden you've got a camellia that's in flower in like right. when and sometimes when it's cold it may only last a day or so but man it like warms your heart and it's like something oh, to see and yeah. i'll tell you what i i i love the camellias in the spring they say that it is the best time to plant camellias so that they establish now i don't know i'm back and forth on that if you see it buy it plant it and enjoy it and uh I'll tell you what it's it just is a, is a great plant and it's an evergreen glossy dark dark green leaves i mean really dark hunter green leaves a little bit of a gloss to it a slight serration on the edge of the leaf it is a terrific plant right. it is a terrific plant um i told you it was just in uh, savannah georgia uh -huh. their autumn flowering camellias are 10 feet tall wow flowering now i yeah. i thought it was i actually thought i was looking i thought it was a rose of sharon <laughs> and i walked up wow. to it and i said no hey it's a camellia i'm okay. down south and it was uh, it was amazing. Really? It was amazing. Oh. These plants had to have been like tw thirty years old or that older, old. Wow. and that they were next to some of their historic buildings. And oh, you know, I I was a Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was a Yankee. But uh, you know, the Confederacy will rise yeah. again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, it has with their camellias. Oh, I can imagine. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, everybody out there, if yeah. you want to have a rewarding plant that really, you know, it'll, and again, yeah. your friends come over and they'll see this thing blooming and it's December. I know. It's like, what did you do? Put like <laughs> fake <laughs> flowers out there or something? <laughs> That's right. Uh, camellias are it. Yeah. They're um, right. My son, Carl, he, he like every landscape job he designs. A camellia is going on, going and, and they'll tell me, "It's like we need more yule tides, or we need this variety, or we need that." I'm like, "Relax, you know." Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. "Can't you put, you know?" It's like, "No, I want a camellia on it. I've got a camellia spot for it. It's perfect." <laughs> right. Again, they like to be in a little uh, good, well draining soil. I still just would keep it as best away from winter winds, yeah. just because again they're an evergreen and that they are in. You know, it, they're listed for our zone, and you just still want to keep that winter wind up, mostly because the leaves will have it. Well, they'll dry out a little bit, like a lot of broadleaf evergreens, where yeah. the, they they're subject to drying out in the in the winter. Uh, keep that in mind. Yeah. So one thing is, if you're going to plant one, and any of your broadleaf evergreens, you want to use a wilt stop. Wilt stop. Yep. Wilt stop is an anti-transparent, and that word makes me sound smarter than I am. <laughs> and what it does is it just encapsulates the leaf. It's chapstick for your plants, okay? And what it will do is it will protect your plants from, from drying out and during the winter time, and that's key. So again, you're, it's called wilt stop, and you can spray all of your plants, but please follow the instructions. There are some precautions for some junipers and, and arborvitae, so you want to just make sure that you're following that correctly. But for your broadleaf evergreens, mm -hmm. nothing better. Right. Nothing better. better right? Nothing better. You will have the most beautiful broadleaf flowering evergreens like azaleas and rhododendrons and camellias than you've ever had. So Wonderful. you want to you want to use it, and it'll protect them from drying out like we get sometimes. Beautiful. Anything to add, Julio? No, I just love that plant. Yeah, me too. I mean, you know, some of those flowers are like peonies. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. They're, they're double flowers that double flowers. that come out, and they're just oh, my goodness. and in pinks and whites oh. and reds, and, and the reds like that lipstick red. Oh, it's yeah. real red. Real. Yeah, the one you have. Is yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that. I'm telling you, Oof. everybody, go to your local garden center and yes. ask them if they have any Yule Tide camellias, mm -hmm. and tell them that we sent you there, mm -hmm. and if they don't, say they should get some. <laughs> <laughs> but also to check back in the spring because right. again that a lot of times we'll we'll get them in two times a year we'll get them in the spring and then we'll get them in the fall so just uh again camellias great plant you will love it yes all right we've got to take a break so we'll be right back in the garden 
right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a land? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com and we'll see you in the garden. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants, and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma. A natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. We have to remind everybody. Yes. We're just talking about camellias are hardy. Uh huh. Figs are not so much. <laughs> so if you've got a fig tree, you need to protect that thing. Um, we have uh, brown turkey fig is probably the most popular that we sell and that in our area of the country here that there are like monuments it seems like that are in people's back you go down to south philadelphia and you know that's rocky anybody seen the movie rocky that's where that's where rocky was from he was out from south philly behind those row homes there are fig trees that are 20 feet tall and that there are these spires that are i they it's let me back up okay let me back up what we're talking about in this segment is about how to take care of your fig tree and protect it over the winter. Uh, before I get ahead of myself, I'm all excited. I'm just, I mean, because it's amazing. It it's is. people who uh -huh. love figs. Oh, yeah. And do you, are you a fig eater? Yeah, I like figs. You like figs? Oh, Mitch? Yeah. Figs? Oh, Mitch yeah. is on oh, board with figs. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Brett's working two uh, boards today. Brett, you yeah. eat figs? Uh, he said no. Oh, yeah. uh, no, you're not Greek then, are you? Uh, 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 
<laughs> German and Irish. No, okay. all right. All right. We'll, well, we'll we'll see what we can do, but <laughs> fresh figs. There's nothing like them, and that if you are growing a fig tree, you're going to need to give it some protection. You've got to wait. Uh, more than likely, all the leaves have fallen off at this point, and you want to make sure you prune it and and just good sense with pruning you don't want to have any crossing branches that where they're rubbing together um, anything uh, that's growing like horizontally you you want to to take your tree and if it's really tall you can remove some of those older stems and the taller stems and because mm -hmm. you favor the shorter the younger ones are going to produce better mm -hmm. but here's what you want to use Julio. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. You're cross dressing days. Oh, no, <laughs> <I'm no. laughs> you want to use stockings yeah. rather than twine mm -hmm. because stockings are a softer material and where twine you'll dig into to when you're trying to bundle it up and to to sash it up. If you do like a twine or a sisal or another type of, of like polytine, you're going to cut into it and you can girdle the actual tree. So you Careful. use stockings. So mm -hmm. just man up, go into your <laughs> local, uh, <laughs> your local Walgreens or your supermarket and just yeah. say you're buying them for the wife. That's right. Okay. And, <laughs> and buy some stockings. Yeah. It is absolutely the best because it has a little bit of stretch yeah, to it. Yeah. Uh, and that where it really does a nice job and, and that keep them around because you'll want to use them on your tomato plants later on too. Uh, you're going to wrap that, the stems into a bundle and you're tying it up as tight as you can because what you're going to do is you're going to wrap it like insulation. So first of all, you're going to wrap the bundle together and you're going to get it as tight as you can without snapping any branches and you're getting it as compact as you can. Julio, let me know if I'm not making any sense. No, no, it is. Yeah. Because it, it's, very, it's pretty it's flexible. Very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. It's this very is flexible. Because yeah. you're, you're wrapping them up. Right, so don't be uh, shy about that. Yep. yep. Then you're going to wrap it in burlap. Mm -hmm. Now you can get out your twine. That's good. You yeah. can put your... Stockings back on. Uh, you're going to use twine to keep the burlap from sagging. Now, I've heard about stockings sagging, but burlap sagging, you don't want. You want to make sure that you're, again, you're, you're building a structure that where the airspace that's inside the inside layer is going to be insulation. Then you're going to wrap it with burlap, okay, you're wrapping it with burlap, and you've got to keep that burlap because it's got to stay with snow that will happen and with all of the different weather. You have to make sure this thing is lasting all the way into April. Now, you can build a frame out of metal stakes or chicken wire. You know, I don't know if you have to do that. It depends on how big your tree is. But after you get it basically bundled and burlapped, that's when you start putting in and wrap right. a layer of cardboard. Some people use uh, roofing felt right. That's uh, around that frame. Mm -hmm. And then here's a trick. You want to fill that with shredded leaves. You're not sure what to do with all those leaves that have fallen off that tree. If you fill that with leaves, that also adds to the property of the insulation that you're going to get. Again, it's you're going to start in layers and work it so that you're just trying to get so that water doesn't get stuck. So your your final layer. Oh God, this is so so it's confusing. <laughs> no, no, you're right. So you have to make it so that you start at the bottom, okay, and fill the leaves in the bottom section, and then as you the next layer whether you're using felt paper or whether you're using cardboard, you want to start at the, the, so that it's shedding water and not collecting water inside. inside. Yeah. All right. So you start at the bottom and you put on your first, say, well, we're using, we're, we're using stockings. We might as well say girdle of, uh, of cardboard. And then you overlap the next, 
section so that, again, you want water to shed off of it. You don't want to collect into it. And then you keep on going up to the top. And, and again, the cardboard works really well, has great insulating properties. Right. The roofing paper is, you know, or the, the felt is going to look better. It's going to be maybe easier, but it doesn't matter. You're going to still use the same technique and that when you get to the top, and again, you've got to secure this. I mean, people use duct tape. People will try to use twine, but again, you need to have it secure for the entire winter, not just when you're done and turn around and go back inside. So... Again, you don't need it to be airtight, okay? For those of you that are fanatical, you don't need it airtight, but what you need it to do is have it keep the warmth inside so that it will stay until April. And again, layering it so that when you get to the top and you have a spire, you're going to take a five-gallon bucket, spackling bucket, upside down and put it over top so that that's the top of your tree it's going to be covered and so the water's not going to get in it's not going to decompose the cardboard because it's going to be on a uh it's going to be shedding off the water will be shedding off rather than collecting into the corrugation and again when you take care of your figs that way you'll be amazed on the production because you get a jump in the season you don't have to wait. I mean, it, it's it's an important thing to do, especially in our colder zones that are trying. People are battling the cold to make these things grow. And it is amazing. And it's definitely the Philadelphia area. It's just... It looks like teepees, uh, don't it they? It is. <laughs> it is. It looks like the, the Washington Monument in everybody's backyard. <laughs> okay, so that's what you're looking for. Yeah, that's, right. that's what you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, it's something that uh, you talk about hardy gardeners. Yeah, I know. You know, they're trying to do things that are a little difficult. Yeah. And I, uh, you can put figs, like you can grow them in a pot, but production is going to be minimal. Yeah, that's much. The badge of honor is having the tallest spire in the back in your in backyard. backyard. <laughs> you win. You there know? You go. <laughs> we've had right. issues where we've had customers come in and where uh, they cut them down really hard, oh, which you can, yeah. but then you have a, you know, a fig shrub, <laughs> and <laughs> the production is isn't as much. Yeah. But uh, again, yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Use the method that we're talking about. We're talking about layering. Yeah. Uh, you're basically forming this spire that it sheds the water off and has the insulation property inside and that the top of it is a bucket so that it sheds the water off so the water's not getting inside. That's right. <laughs> that sounded confusing. Do you yeah. have, do you have, did you yeah. understand that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, if Larry, that's why we have the hotline. That's right. Call, Call the hotline. Call us. Yeah, we'll be here if for you. If you've got questions... Or you've got comments, yeah. or you want to to you want to. We're talking about figs, but you want to talk about houseplants. Right. right. Call the hotline. That right. number is 609-685-1880. and we'll be glad to answer right. any of your questions. And hey, if you get on the air, what do you get? Free T-shirt. Right Free here. T-shirts. Yeah, come on. Oh, All yeah. right. We've got to take a break. We'll be right back <laughs> right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. You know, some of our most frequent questions revolve around organic container gardening for houseplants, annuals, and of course, vegetables. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is a lightweight soil mixture made with salmon, blueberry, lobster, and other composts, as well as calcium and chitin-rich lobster shells, sphagnum peat, perlite, and kelp meal. 
It is a great soil. And Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor organic potting soil is rich in organic material, creating lush, disease-resistant plants that require less watering, less feeding. Its rich, dark brown color provides the perfect balance between water retention and drainage needed for healthy plants. Coast of Maine's Bar Harbor Blend Organic Potting Soil is available at these local retailers. Tony's Farm and Garden, Windsor, New Jersey. Espen Shades Garden Centers and Greenhouse, Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, Pennsylvania. Wanting to up your game in the vegetable garden? With 90 years of organic gardening experience, the Espoma Company has you covered. Espoma Organic Garden Tone is not your average garden variety fertilizer. Garden Tone is especially blended for organic vegetable gardens. Its all-natural formula contains Biotone, a blend of organic ingredients that supplies essential nutrients for strong, healthy plants, and mouth-watering vegetables. Its slow-release formula provides continuous feeding. The Biotone contained in Garden Tone is a combination of organic ingredients and beneficial microbes to help roots grow deeper and faster for bigger, more bountiful harvests. Garden Tone is simple to use and safe for people, pets, and the planet. No harmful chemicals or synthetic fertilizers are ever added. You can find Garden Tone at fine garden centers. Visit Espoma.com to find a retailer near you. Garden Tone from Espoma. A natural in the garden since 1929. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860 WWDB and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800 WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Oh, Led, I'll tell you what's happening. Uh, (laughs) You're all invited to Bloomers this Friday, November 19th, to our annual holiday preview party. Ah, yes. (laughs) Julia, we are... Bad day with time management right now. Know, We've got to yeah. rush this segment. Hey, you are, like Julio said, you are all invited. We have a barbershop quartet. We've got discounts mm-hmm. on Christmas. It is our Christmas holiday cheer kickoff. Yes. Got, you know, we'll give you a little nibble, something to eat. <laughs> but we right. invite all of our listeners to come out and, and see us. Uh-huh. It's uh, it's a fun time. Fun time, we, yeah. we, we, we have a good time. And, yeah. and again, it's Bloomer's. Holiday preview party. That's what we call it. It's on Friday, November 19th at between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. You don't have to stay the whole time, mm-hmm. but we do have a good time. So, again, it happens all during that those hours, so you don't really have to get there at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Um, it's just during that time we'll, we just are having uh, – really, it's, it's Christmas lands – <laughs> at Bloomers, you know. So again, that's Bloomers Home and Garden in Washington Township, and it's Friday, the nineteenth, between five and ten. Oh yes, come on down. Yep, come on down. We here we go. Break. Sorry, we've got to take another break. Another break. <laughs> we'll be right back, right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomers Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. 
it's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or hear us on the radio each weekend. Every Saturday morning, Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley, first at 8 a.m. on Talk 860, WWDB, and again at 9 a.m. on AM 800, WTMR. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard through the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m., WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, me and Julio, wow. if you've got a fig tree, <laughs> yes. get it covered. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Camellias, we learned so much. Oh, boy. But we are out of time. time. Hey, I want to thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week the same time right here in the garden. We'll see you in the garden. <laughs>